If you ask somebody what a UFO field is, generally, this is what comes to mind. So when I tell them it actually looks more like this, they get completely confused. They don't understand why there's a field inside the UFO and also why this field continues to build. The simple answer is the outside and the inside are built with two totally different forms of energy. To better understand this, Let's just go back to the basics. This is a simple toroidal structure, and if I ask you to build a field around it, this is the most common answer that you would give. A toroid builds magnetic field lines that go around it in one direction. The next step would look like this. You add wire to the toroid. Then it builds a field based on the wire and where it's placed. The problem is, a toroid or a toroid with wire around it does not build a field that looks anything like this. So let's just start over. Is a toroid really what you want at the center of your UFO? And the answer simply is no. So if it's no, what do we need to put there instead? We need to build a flow pattern into the coil. And there's no better way to build a flow pattern than to use sacred geometry. So we start with simple shapes that we know that we can put into a toroidal fashion. Then we start to make them more complex. Each time that we make a shape, we put it into a wire form. Then we test it and we check the flow pattern. We see which ones match and which ones don't. For every new pattern we try, there's always a different outcome. How you connect them and how each one flows matters. We will start to see effects in everything that we do. Sometimes the energy flow can rotate a neodymium sphere magnet in circles. At this stage, we start to push it. We start to imagine this as a 3D shape. Then we start winding coils to build it into a 3D shape. We're looking for a flow. We're looking for energy to move from one point to the other. And what happens when one thing crosses another? And can we still rotate the neodymium magnet in it? The answer is yes. The question then becomes, can we add multiple magnetic fields inside of this coil in order to get something different to happen? This journey is not going to be an easy one. It's not going to come overnight. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of practice to get it right. Every single coil you build is different. Every single one has a different outcome. Every one of them creates a different field geometry. It's going to be important to log every single test as you do them so that you can refer back to the notes of the video footage that you took of each single test. This is not an easy task. It will take a lot of time. Please be patient. But the understanding at the end will be completely worth it. But once we have our field coil and we start to understand what it does, what else do we need to put into this device to get us our field flow? Because just this coil as it sits is not going to do it without adding certain effects to it. As we look back at our UFO structure and how the fields are built, we also have to realize we need different types of energy. We're going to need a magnetic field and we're also going to need a static field. Let's start with the magnetic field. We can use a Tesla coil in order to create a magnetic field on the outside. However, this standard Tesla coil has a weak field that comes out of it. We need to strengthen that or thicken the field. The only way to do that is to rotate the Tesla coil. Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. We could just put a wire on top of our Tesla coil, spin it, ion wind will spin it around, and we'll get a rotating Tesla coil. However, that's not a rotating Tesla coil at all. 
That's usage of the Tesla coil that expels energy out, but doesn't give us what we want. We physically need to turn the Tesla coil. In a standard Tesla coil, just sitting on your table, will produce energy that looks like this. You get the energy flow pattern that goes around in a circle. However, in the center, you will also get the Tesla coil ring. It is a very distinct looking sine wave. You will see it build up and disperse energy. That's where the energy comes from. It accumulates in the coil and then it bursts out the top. As you can see in this, we see the ring right in the center. The Tesla coil doesn't put out necessarily lines of energy. It puts out a field bubble. However, in order to thicken that bubble and put it around our UFO, we have to rotate it. You have to continuously start new field lines every time that it goes around. Therefore, it'll make the whole thing thicker. That's the only way to get a proper bubble around our UFO. Besides the field bubble, a Tesla coil provides a longitudinal wave. This is going to give us direction in our UFO. It's going to say whether we go up or we go down. As many of you have already figured out, a regular Tesla coil configuration is not going to do that. We are going to have to build a bipolar Tesla coil. We also need to change the orientation that a bipolar Tesla coil is normally in. Again, we're looking for the field energy to go north and south. That means it has to stand straight up with the coil in the center. Now that we have a better understanding of how the outside magnetic field built, now we need to look back at the static inside field that needs to be built as well. This is an ion thruster. As you can see the purple in it, it's making ion wind. The problem here is that it's using the energy. The energy is being transferred into light. It's also being transferred into ions. Therefore, the energy is being used in this process. We need to lower the amperage on this energy in order for it to become static energy. If you do not do this and you do not understand the relationship between frequency and heat and frequency and amperage and voltage and frequency, this is going to be a very hard task to pull off. If you do understand the relationship, then changing this plasma into a static electricity should be the easiest thing in the world to do. Now, it's imperative that it comes out as static electricity. If it comes out as ion wind, you are using the very energy you need to be produced in the bubble and wasting it. It will nullify the field you're trying to create. As you take a look at this picture, you're starting to understand how the fields are being built and why. On the outside, we see our Tesla coil field. It's magnetic. It's going to hold in the static field. The static field in this is shown in purple. We can now see the outside field holding in the inside field. We can also see the flow of the Tesla coil as it wraps around and goes back into the center. What you also notice is the static field does the exact same thing. What does that create in the center? It creates an artificial zero point a point in which the energy is now compressed and is now higher on the inside than the outside field. Why? Why do we have compression there? It all has to go through the center of that toroid shape we're trying to build. One of the most common misconceptions is when you're talking about compression in the center. People go back to this picture right here. They continuously think that we're building a toroid with the magnetic fields only in compression. However, the actual answer is much different than that. We are using a DC pulse wave in order to build these energies. 
that means that they're going to be pulsed. It's going to create one field, then create another field, then create another field. It's continuous. If you look at the field, it looks like a bubble, but it's actually not. It's a continuously new field that's being created all the time. That happens in the outside field bubble by the Tesla coil, but it also happens to the static electricity in the center. Static electricity is airborne. Therefore, it propagates in the air. It does not stay as a field around a coil. You are building energy in layers, continuously flowing out of your coil setup. As we go back to our UFO again, we can see the lines never stop. They never stop producing a new field. They also never stop going back into the center. For every new field that's created, the center increases in energy. That's why the zero point has a lot more energy than any one field on the outside. Now that we understand how a lot of this stuff is starting to come together, understand this. It's only simple lift that we're getting out of this. We have not put in any feature for directionality at all. Only the direction that goes up and down. So, there's a lot more stuff to learn. Where do we start? You're going to have to go back to the geometry. Sacred geometry always tells you the answer. And it always propagates into building coils that put all of it into one. You're going to have to decide on your own. Do you build the Tesla coil separate from the coil? Do you build the coil into the Tesla coil? Are you going to build something that works correctly with one field to the next without overlapping and ruining that field? Does it matter which one you turn on at which time? All of those are answers you're going to have to give yourself as you do the test and you start to make this work. I can tell you one thing. We are getting there. But the problem is not everybody understands it yet or even how we get to this point. That's why I'm making this video so that we can all understand exactly what we're looking at so that we know how to evaluate it. Once we do that, we can move forward to the next part of our UFO. I hope this helped everybody out there. I hope this helps everybody see exactly how I see it. And just remember, the journey is long, but it's worth every single bit of it to get a UFO off the ground. Have yourself a great day. Thank you.